And welcome back to this Week in Review on Bayou Time. I'm Martin Foss. And so very sad to hear the news of the passing of Mr. Ray Marcello. I'm not quite sure when or where was the first time that I met Mr. Ray. I am quite certain it had some connection with my dad and mom through the family of Dr. Jerry Haydell. Mr. Ray was cousins to Miss Jean Haydell, who was a Marcello. What I can tell you is how proud and happy I was to have met Mr. Ray, and that I continue to know and honor him over all of these years. When you really break life down, it can be full of joy, full of pain, full of lessons, full of giving, full of service, full of God, full of example, full of giving, and full of community. No news break needed here to inform all of you that Mr. Ray Marcello exemplified all of these categories. And I do choose the word exemplified in each of these categories. When HTV came up with the Eugene J. Foss Veterans Award for God, country, community, service, and family, my dad reluctantly allowed me to use him as a symbol for this award, but agreed on one condition. He insisted that the first award would be given to Mr. Ray Marcello. There was no hesitation from me and mom on that matter. What better man to present than my dad and what better man to receive the first award than Mr. Ray Marcello. I can recall so vividly that moment when Mr. Ray walked up to receive his award that he embraced dad in a way that only World War II veterans could appreciate. It was one of many defining moments in my life that showed me that Mr. Ray was not only a World War II hero, but he was so much more. When Mr. Ray was held as a prisoner of war in World War II, he dwindled down to a mere 83 pounds. But he persevered. And I asked him during a one-on-one -on -one interview one day how he got through that time. He told me, God. When you look at Mr. Ray's life, God was always there. And don't think that Mr. Ray did not experience the bad with the good throughout life. He lost loved ones all around him in ways unimaginable. But he persevered. Persevered. What a good word to describe and show all of us who think we have it bad that all we have to do is use Ray Marcello as an example on why we need to quit feeling sorry for ourselves about little things and get to more important stuff in life. Yes, more important stuff. You see, it's simple. Mr. Ray did not live an extravagant life, but he sure provided quite well for those around him. And I'm not just talking in monetary ways. What's more important was that Mr. Ray provided service. He not only served his country with the biggest burden placed on him as a POW, he served, more importantly, God, his community as an elected official, and his family as a beacon of light that should be put in a manual for all to follow. Just this week, I talked with a dear friend of mine, Dr. Patrick Haydell. Mr. Ray was Dr. Pat's godfather. Dr. Pat told me that he was so fortunate to have had Mr. Ray as a godfather and that Mr. Ray was a great example to him throughout his life. On a personal note, Mr. Ray really paid me one of the highest compliments that anyone could have bestowed upon me in my career. What he told me is not important tonight, but that compliment will always be on my heart because of whom it came from. Why? because I knew he meant it. When Mr. Ray told you something, he meant it. I watched Mr. Ray over the years. I saw him at all of the veterans events that he could physically make. I saw him as his family threw him birthday parties. I saw Mr. Marcello in those moments when a community and family never forgot what Mr. Ray Marcello meant to this community. I always sensed that when Dad was introduced together with Mr. Ray at any veteran's function, that Dad beamed more because he was standing next to Mr. Ray. 
Dad admired Mr. Ray so much, and we certainly can't blame Dad for that one bit because we all did. I always watched Mr. Ray around my mom and dad. He was such a gentleman. Oh, and I'm quite sure that over the years, Mr. Ray had his moments, especially when he served as alderman of Terrebonne Parish. However, I'm 100% certain that he handled all of that with diplomacy. Elected officials, please listen carefully. Diplomacy. We often cover Mr. Joe Waits in his seminars on public service, ethics, and demeanor. I could save this parish plenty of money, and I'm sure Mr. Waits would agree that all we would need to do is place a picture of Mr. Ray Marcello at the seminar and tell everyone simply, follow this man's blueprint, and not another word need be spoken. I knew this day would come. It had become all so obvious to me after my father's death that no matter how great the person, their day will come. I'm not sure why or to what extent I believe in fate, but I do. On Tuesday, I had a very full day, but something was tugging at me and telling me that I needed to go see Mr. Ray. I headed for Terrebonne General's fifth floor with a small religious gift in hand. When I arrived, his son Sal was there. Sal graciously allowed me some time with Mr. Ray. He couldn't say much, he was in a lot of pain, but I knew through that smile and the fact that he put out that hand for the handshake, I knew exactly what Mr. Ray was trying to say. That handshake wasn't as powerful as it used to be, but the symbolism of it was still as powerful as ever. That handshake and smile was Ray Marcello's calling card. When he shook your hand on any matter, that was his greeting. But more important, that was his signature. For more than one reason, I knew that would be the last time I shook Mr. Ray's hand. However, it will not be the last time that I think of Mr. Ray. I have so much footage here at HTV of Mr. Ray and so many memories of Mr. Ray with mom and dad and other veterans at events, and my memory bank will never allow it to dwindle. More than that, I have fond memories of a hero that came home and never wanted to be a hero. However, his community made him one, because after all, that's what he was. He was a hero. That is why I ask all Terrebonne Parish elected officials in this community to please join me on what I am going to call Ray Day. I will ask that this year's 4th of July celebration, which we will hold on June 27th at the home of Terrebonne Civic Center, be called Ray Day. I will ask Mr. Danny Piku to help me make this happen, and I'm sure that Danny will not hesitate on this matter. We did celebrate Mr. Ray when he was alive, and I am so glad we did. That's what makes Homer different. We don't wait. We don't forget our veterans. Mark your calendars now for June 27th of 2020, the day of our 4th of July celebration at the Civic Center. Ray Day. I can see it now. Mr. Ray is now with his wife, family, and friends who have gone before him. What a celebration that must be for Mr. Ray. No more pain from his POW experience in World War II. No more physical or mental pain, only joy. God, you know Ray because you made Ray in your own light. Make sure he gets that same VIP treatment that we gave him down here in Homa. Mr. Ray Marcello, a true American hero. We will honor Mr. Ray Moore on Monday night's Bayou Time.